give every people from falling, oh God. Oh, give them strength, oh God. Strength from on out, oh God. And oh God, don't forget Pastor Jacobs, oh God. Remember First Lady, First Lady, oh God, a true love master. Oh God, remember Sister Minnie, oh God. Oh God, remember every member of this church from the front to the back, oh God. From the pulpit to the door, oh God. I thank them all up to you, oh God. Bind us together, Master. For one thing fall without the other one. We learned in Sunday school this morning, oh God, that the eye can't make it without the eyeballs of the eyes and the hands. We need all of them to function, oh God. We need the feet to walk. We can't use the eyes to walk. We need the feet to walk, oh God. You taught us in your word, Master. We all belong to one body, and one body in Christ, oh God. Just let us continue, oh God, to lift your name on it, because you're worthy. You're worthy this morning. You're worthy to be blessed. And I'm glorifying the name today, oh God, for this is the day that you have made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, I thank you, oh God. You're on your way back. Just like you said to me. You're on your way back, Master. And I want to be ready when you call my name. Lord, I thank you. I praise and I magnify you. Oh, glory be to God. Glory to the highest of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, touch our young people of true love, oh God. Oh, God, touch our minds, oh God. Let them know, oh God. They got to help you in their life, oh God, in order to make it, oh God. Without you, they can't do nothing, oh God. Oh God, please, sir, have mercy upon them, oh God. Crown their heads, master, with more wisdom and knowledge of the word, oh God. Let them continue to come to Sunday school. Learn your word, oh God. But your word is what's keeping us today. Oh, we thank you, that man. Oh, we thank you, oh God. And oh God, when I said my last prayer, Go in the dining room, not to come out no more. I want to hear your welcome voice. Said, servant, my good and faithful servant, you fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished your course. Come on home and rest from your labor. Oh, I thank you right now. I'm waiting on you, old girl. I'm waiting on you now to tell me well done. Well done. Job well done. In the name of Jesus, I do pray, Master. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raise your hands if you love God. I'm reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And then I also have, uh, I have Psalms chapter 8, verse 3, 3 through 3 or 4. Okay, and both are coming from the New King James Version. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And now if you would go to Psalms 8, chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. In the King James Version. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? May God add a special blessing to the reading hearing and doers of his word. 
Come on. Come on, musicians. Come on, musicians. How many love God this, this morning? How many love the Lord this morning? Now, just because I'm talking soft, I don't want you all to, to give it back to me soft, okay? Amen. Let's lift God up this morning. I'm just soft smoking most of the time, unless you give me that. <laughs> Come on, let's start with this song. It says, I love you. I love you, Lord. And if you feel this song, if this means anything to you in your personal life, between you and God, then just come on and sing it with us. That's all right. Awesome. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I pray you, I lift you up, I magnify your name, that's why.
beginning of this part of the service, but we encourage everyone to just keep praising God, not just today, not just today, not just today, all week long, keep praising God. Think about what God means to you in your life. Think about the things that God has done for you, where God has brought you from. You know better than I know all of the things that God has done for you. And praise is free. It don't cost you nothing to lift up the name of God. Is that all right? Amen. Come on, let's take our seats, praise. Amen. Everybody, we welcome you today, True Love, to the Women uh, Sisterhood Sunday, Women United in Christ Ministry. I want to thank the devotional team, praise God. We want you to let go, let God have his divine way. Amen. We come to worship the Lord today, right? We didn't come to worship each other, we came to worship God. We have true love, honor to our pastor, to all the ministers in the house, and to each and every one of you. I bless you today and greet you with the master's word, peace. Thank you to, for um, just letting us celebrate women today, amen? Praise God, and we want to let you know that true love is a church that loves you out loud, amen? We don't just say it. We show it in deed and in action. So we want you to let go, let God, as I said, have his divine way. I turn you over to the ministry, uh, minister of music team and ask the praise team to just saturate God today with your words. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. 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 Enter in, God. Like you did on the day of Pentecost. Enter in with a shift of the mighty wind, oh God. Enter in, oh God. We're coming to you today, God, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanksgiving on our mind, God. We just want to thank you, God, for being the amazing God that you are, God. Thank you, God, that you allow us to be on your wake-up list this morning, God. We just want to praise you. We want to magnify you. We want to glorify you for your goodness and your mercy that you've shown towards us today, God. We thank you, God, for the activities of our limbs, oh God. We thank you, God, for the food and shelter. We thank you, God, for your healing power, oh God. Each one of us stand in a need, oh God. But you said whatever we ask, trust and believe and come in your name, oh God. We're coming today, God, expecting something. We're coming, God, expecting healing. We're coming, God, expecting deliverance. We're coming, God, expecting restoration. We're coming, God, asking you to save somebody today, God. We're coming, God, asking you to do a shift in each one of our lives today, God. For your goodness, oh God. We're praising you, God. Somebody's in the hospital. Somebody's at home, oh God. Somebody's behind prison walls, oh God. You're out of presence. You're everywhere, oh God. Meet the need of your children, God. If we ever need you, we need you now. We're calling on your name, oh God. We're calling on your name for deliverance. We're calling on your name to heal, oh God. We're calling on your name, God, that we can love more to each other, oh God. Unify us, oh God, in oneness. We're all a part of your body, oh God, because you gave the Holy Spirit, oh God, and you made us 
Good morning, True Love. I was glad when he said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Some of us didn't make it. I'm here to do the welcome. Yay! Welcoming our new guests. I, when I first came, I was welcome. I was well received. So I love welcoming our new people. I stand before you in the presence of God and man to acknowledge our first time guests. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing. We got a lot of them today, y'all. I got Desmond Jackson. Linda Diaz, she is the guest of Wendy Smith and Christy Diaz. Remain standing for me. Thank you. Rhonda Bragg and Cornelius Bragg. They are the guests of Deacon Charles Trumbull and Sister Deborah Trumbull. She put on her, that's her parents. Amen. Reverend Simmons. Raybell Jones. Ooh, I got some more, y'all. What do you do? Raybell Jones is the guest of Deborah Crumble as well. We have Ineda Neal. And we also have Reverend Dr. Aaron Neal. Mr. and Mrs. Kenny Mills. Kamira Jackson. And man, are there any names I didn't call you, our visitors? If you will stand as well, remain standing. All right, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles Hemfield Jr., and Lady Stephanie, and the True Love Missionary Baptist Church family, you could have chosen to go anywhere else, but you chose True Love. We thank you. Please come again. And this includes our virtual guests. And we are a church that love out loud. You may be seated. I also have a card. It's a thank you card. It's great to know the world is full of such generous people like you. To the True Love Missionary Baptist Church family, thank you for your many prayers, kindness, and concerns. From Sister Molly Kennedy, in the Rollins family. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. We give God praise, glory, and honor. Amen for all that has taken place thus far in our worship service. Amen. To the our, our first time uh, guest today. Amen. Once again, we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Word of Peace and with Jesus' joy. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad that the Lord led you here today to be a part of our worship experience. As has been shared already, we know that there are many churches throughout the city that you could have gone to, but we're so glad that you graced our doorstep today that you came in to worship with us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. I'm going to switch to this one. We can say amen and out. Amen. amen. All right. Praise God. We do praise God again for you. Uh, if you are a member of a local church, wherever you, are, uh, wherever you reside, amen, uh, we pray that you'll take our greetings back to your pastor and to your local church and let them know that we did our best to love you out loud. But if, in fact, you don't have a home church and you are a resident of the Las Vegas area, maybe a new resident, we want you to find out today that your search is over for a church home. Amen. The search is over. You came as friends, but you can lead today as family. So we want to extend that invitation to you right now. Amen. That we welcome you in this place. Praise the name of God. My sisters and brothers, before we move to our tithes and offerings, 
uh, we want to uh, have our uh, the draping of Mother Winslow's seat. Amen. Uh, we need to get a microphone. Can someone get a microphone to the mother? Uh, we're, she's going to be draping the seat. She and, and Mother Wash are going to drape the seat. On yesterday, during our uh, homegoing celebration, our celebration of life, uh, we uh, did a certificate of posthumous induction for Mother Barbara Jean Winslow, who served the True Love Missionary Baptist Church with unwavering dedication and devotion. A legacy and faith, kindness, and selfless, selflessness continues to inspire and uplift our church and community. May her nurturing spirit, love, wisdom, grace, and service live on in the hearts of all who were blessed to have been touched by her presence. Inducted posthumously into the Mother's Ward of the True Love Missionary Baptist Church on the 18th day of May, 2024. Tiffany, I heard Tiffany's in the house today. Oh, oh, well, praise God. All right, I was told she was here. We'll get these certificates to them. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we have them for, uh, for Mother Winslow's other offspring. At this time, Mother, Mother Joyce. Thank you, Pastor. Give an honor to God and to Pastor Him Hill, the related staff, to each of you that's present this morning, for the ones that can hear me wherever you are. Love you, darling. God has blessed me to be here almost 85 years. The hardest thing I have to do is to bring you I enjoy doing everything else, but when it's time to break one of my policy, that's a hurting thing for me. I have a tender heart. That's why, I guess, why God gave it to me, so that I could show love. But you just know that Sister Winslow, I thought about it when she came, a lot of things I had anticipated said yesterday, got up here and said everything except what I had planned to say. But one of the things I had planned to say was, I remember Sister Winslow when I came here, we had, there still is, there's a dancing spirit here at True Love. When you go around the table, there was always, Sister Kay, you know I'm telling the truth, there was always somebody dancing around this table. Sister Winslow was one of those. She would get this offering and she was sitting there on the second seat there. And she would get her offering and she would dance all around that table. Mother Whitehead used to do that. Sister Louie's mother used to do that. Now we have a runner around here, a child that just runs around church. There's a spirit here that moves you. That moves you when it's time to give. You know God bless a chance to give. He said he bless a chance. Don't give something that you want to keep. Be happy that you have it. Happy that you give it. Happy to live the life that Sister Barbara Jean Winslow lived. Happy to be a Sunday school teacher. Happy to teach the mission. Happy to be a sister. Oh, Lord, she'd tell you when you were wrong. She'd encourage you when you was right. Happy to be that kind of a sister. Happy to be that kind of a mother. Oh, Will, she loved all of us. She loved you, too. Why well, I say that? Will is one of our late baby. Will, raise your hand so they know what I'm talking about. Raise your hand, Will. Stop looking at me, raise your hand. There you go. <laughs> Amen. And she loved him, and I love him too. God loves a cheerful giver. When you go around this table, it's all right to dance. It's all right to say hallelujah. It's all right to be cheerful and be happy because of what God has done for you. He didn't begrudge things that he did for us. When he healed our bodies, and that's what he's still doing, when we lay down at night, he wakes us up the next day. That's what he's still doing. He don't be bright doing these things for us, Reverend Brad. I believe he's happy to do it. He went to the cross for us. He went to, oh, hallelujah. He went to the cross for us. That's the love that he has for us. That's the love that we have in each other. Oh, Lord, girl. You know what I'm talking about. You know the leader. We know that shepherd. Thank you, Lord, he taught the shepherd yesterday. Yeah. Thank you, God, that we know the shepherd. Yeah. Thank you that we're able to trip this. So when so those sat there, after they moved from Hope, she sat there. You can see her from the Sunday that she walked in. I know. Oh, my Lord, always those children was with her. They bring her in. She danced in. The last Sunday she walked in, she danced down this aisle, coming to her seat. And we thank you, but that spirit is still here. It's still here. It's all right to shine. Amen.
Come on, y'all can do better than that. Go and clap your hands, all you people. And shout out to God with a voice of fire. Amen. We praise God for Mother Winslow, for the life and the legacy and her love. Amen. Hallelujah. They played a video. They showed a video on Friday night. And in that video, she said, uh, one of the things she said was when it's time for her to, to transition, time for her to, to, to for her home going operation, she said, don't y'all be sad for me and don't you be crying and shed no tears. She said, because I've gone to be with my Lord. And so we praise the Lord for her, for her witness. She said, I already know where I'm going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God said, where the wicked shall cease from their troubling and our weary souls shall be at rest. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for our tithes and offerings, sisters and brothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalmist said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So blessing his name, sisters and brothers, and not just sitting there clapping and so forth. It's not just shouting and running around the church, but we also bless his name by recognizing that everything that we are and everything that we have comes from God. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell therein. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You've been young and now you're old. You've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging bread. Our ushers are passing through the aisles right now with envelopes. For those of you that desire to give by envelope today, there are others who would like to give uh, electronically. So we have our website. Go to our website at www.truelovembclv.com. Click on the giving tab. Or maybe you might want to use the app, the giving app, Ministry One. Find that on your, on your uh, mobile device and go to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Finally, for those of you that are not giving by envelope or you're not giving electronically, there's a fourth way. You can mail your contribution to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 8916. We do welcome those who are part of our virtual sanctuary today and want to let you know as well. Uh, we, we are inviting you to make your contribution today also. Our ushers are about to march, amen. And then we, they're going, you'll be under their direction and they're going to have us go around as well. Praise God. So come on, ushers, show them how it's done. Show them how it's done. Hallelujah.
Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Oh Lord, the songwriter said, I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. God, a part of our service, Lord God, is, Lord, to make a contribution to the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. God, you told us to bring the tithe and the offerings, Lord God, into the storehouse, that your house might be filled, Lord God, that there might be meat in your house. And God, there are many needs, Lord God, of, of this house, Lord, many needs of your people. And so, Lord God, we thank you for those who are able to make a contribution today. And Lord God, let them know that the fruit, Lord, of their sacrifice, Lord, is going to be going to a place where true need is needed and where true love will abound. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you as well for those that had a desire to give but nothing to contribute. Oh God, pour out a blessing upon their lives. We praise you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be a part of what you're doing in this season. Lord God, you said if we would give, that you would, it would be given back unto us, Lord God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men pour into our bosom with the measure that we meet, it should be measured unto us again. We thank you for your faithfulness. Because Lord God, you've never lied to us. You've always kept your word. You've always made provision. We thank you, Lord God. And not only you are on time, God, but you are right time, God. And God, we thank you that even though times are not always good, that you are good all the time. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's time for our video announcements. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Here are our announcements and upcoming events. Dive deep into the Word with us every day by joining us in our Upreach, Inreach, and Outreach weekly studies. This information can be found on our website. Let's get fueled in the Word together. The Brotherhood Breakfast will be held in the Reverend I.W. Wilson Fellowship Hall this Saturday at 8 a.m. What a wonderful way for the men of God to fellowship. The 12-week Waistline Challenge presented by the Body and Soul Ministry has officially begun. Weekly Waistline measurements and weigh-ins will occur on Saturdays at 10 a.m. through June 29th. Remember, you will have to pay $1 for every inch or pound that you gain. You can stay slim and trim by walking with Rev on Saturdays at 6 a.m. right here at True Love. Relax in the shade with a nice cold glass of lemonade. Live for Christ Youth Ministry will be hosting a lemonade fundraiser today, immediately following morning worship in front of the I.W. Wilson Fellowship Hall. The refreshing flavors will be the classic lemonade as well as strawberry lemonade with fresh lemons and strawberries. Again, this is immediately following morning worship in front of the fellowship hall and all donations will go towards the Six Flags Youth Alley. Good morning, Chula family. Approaching closely, we have our youth summer trip. The summer trip will be taking place at Six Flags Amusement Park. The day that this will be taking place on is June 29th. Parents, if you are interested in your child attending, please locate the sign-up sheet in the vestibule and sign them up. New Jerusalem Worship Center, where they reach, teach, reconcile, and release, cordially invites TL to join them for Bishop Dr. James M. Rogers Sr. and Lady Jessie L. Rogers' 37th pastor and wife's anniversary celebration. This glorious event will take place on Sunday, June 2nd at 2 p.m. A heart for God makes the man. John 14, 23 through 28. That is the theme for the True Love Missionary Baptist Church Annual Men's Day Program. This 
event will be held Sunday, June 9th at 3 p.m. Come dress sharply in your black and blue. Save the date because True Love will be celebrating 50 years of abundant grace. This will be a three-day celebration, July 12th with a worship service, July 13th with a gala, and July 14th will be our celebration finale. At the end of service, Pastor will inform you how you can purchase your tickets. True Love family, just a friendly reminder. If there is any ministry looking to host an event at the church, please contact Lady Stephanie prior to scheduling. You may do so at 702-648-3603. Remember, you are a part of this family and we can't do this without you. If you would like to get connected to a ministry, please fill out a ministry connection card and place it in the offering basket or hand it to one of our morning friendly ushers. To stay connected to what's happening here at True Love, Download the easy-to-use Ministry One app and search for True Love. This will give you access to all announcements, events, past sermons, and so much more. You can also follow us on our website at www.truelovembclv.com. And feel free to follow us on our other social media platforms. As always, let's remember our sick, shedding, and bereavement families. Thank you for tuning in to the Special News Report. We'd like to inform you that Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging. An education program presented by the Alzheimer's Association in collaboration with True Love's Body and Soul Ministry will be hosting an event to give you the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's. Join us Saturday, May 25th at 10 a.m. to learn more about the typical age-related memory, thinking, and behavior changes, common warning signs of Alzheimer's and dementia, tips for approaching someone about memory concerns, and much, much more. For more information, please see a member of the Body and Soul Ministry. We are in the middle of no menthol May. And according to the CDC, vapes are becoming more popular with young people. Most vapes contain nicotine and menthol flavored liquids for vapes can conceal harmful aerosols and preserve nicotine. Join us to watch this short clip. Sister Sheila Bird's going to come and share that poem with us. Sisterhood. Y'all getting a poem from me, from Sisterhood. But you know what? We couldn't do nothing without y'all, gentlemen. We thank y'all for your real. All right, so now we can find out what sisterhood means. Can I throw my glasses on? What sisterhood means? Sisterhood is a 
sacred bond where hearts connect and souls respond. It's love that no knows no bound or end. A bond sisters, families, and friends. It stands tall through thick and thin, supporting each other to rise and win. Sharing joy, wiping away tears, a sisterhood that conquers fears. A sister's laughter ringing through the air in moments cherished beyond compare. Acceptance, cherish, understanding, grace, and sisterhood. <laughs> We're going to find our place. <laughs> it's lifting each other up. Other to great heights. Yeah. Right. Not bringing them down. That's something I throw it at <laughs> Guided through darkness towards the light. Embracing differences. Celebrating unity. In sisterhood, we're going to find our community. So let sisterhood be a beacon bright, guiding us through both day and night. For in its embrace, we truly see the strength of sisterhood eternally. Bird, the poet, amen. <laughs> amen. My sisters and brothers, when I came to True Love and uh, was visiting the church first around 2020, and then later in 2017, uh, one of the things that was a feature when we had uh, Women's Son is Pastor Jacobs uh, at that time. Some uh, he'd have tag team preaching, man. And we would have uh, Wilson. Yeah. Uh -huh. Gotta tweak this one. We'd have Sister uh, D. Ever Wilson, and we would also have at the time it was Sister Angela Riley, who is now Reverend Angela Riley. Amen. And they would come back to back on that Sunday and they would preach the word of God and we praise God for them. Well, we're running that back. Amen. Yeah. We're running back tag team preaching. Amen. Yeah. And today we have two gifts uh, that the daughters of this house. Amen. They are a part of the Daughters of Thunder. They are four of, there's two, two of th uh, four, excuse me, two of four of our Daughters of Thunder. And I'm going to introduce both of them back to back. And then after our choir comes and ministers, you will hear them back to back. Amen. 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 Our first preacher. Amen. None other than Pastor Saria Monroe. Amen. She answered the call to ministry in 1985. She was ordained in December of 1995 and assigned to the office of pastor in October of 1998. In that same year, she established her church, Deliverance is Here Now House of Prayer. Before she came to Las Vegas in tw uh, 2001, she was operating her church in Country Club Hills, Illinois. When she arrived in Las Vegas, she ran her ministry here from 2002 to 2008. Then she, did, she decided to put the church on hiatus to assist her mother with the care of her bravely ill father. During that time, she fellowshiped and worked as an associate minister at New Birth Church with Bishop Tyrone Seals. She was also performing marriages, eulogies, and bedside counseling to multiple families. 
She started visiting True Love Missionary Baptist Church in 2021 and officially became a member and associate minister of True Love in August of 2023. Upon the 25th anniversary year of the establishment of her church, she had a strong sense of reopening uh, her church and after praying about it, she officially reopened her church in June of 2023. She's now holding services every second and fourth Sunday of each month at the Durango Hills YMCA. But we know on first, third, and fifth Sunday, Pastor Syria Monroe is with us. Amen. So praise God she came to me and so we cover her and her ministry. Amen. The deliverance is here now, House of Prayer. And we praise God for you and that you are a gift from God to this body of Christ. Our second preacher in the tag team, hello, Evangelist Kelly Jackson, was raised in a close-knit community in San Diego, California. Her journey toward ministry and leadership became, uh, began with a background deeply rooted in music and gospel. Kelly accepted Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior at the young age of 18 and shortly after discovered who God has called her to be. While building relationship with God, her pursuits led, to engage, led her to engage in theological training, studies, and research of God's word, where she honed her skills in biblical interpretation, pastoral care, and community outreach. In addition to her work in ministry, Kelly is a published author. She published her first book titled, For the Life of Me. In addition, Kelly is an entrepreneur. She has had multiple businesses, with the most recent business with her husband being the new owners of a 7-Eleven franchise in North Las Vegas. Nevada. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. They are on that north, that northeast corner of Cheyenne and Losey Road. Amen. Stop by and get a Slurpee. Amen. <laughs> Lastly, my sisters and brothers, balancing her ministry and personal life. Kelly enjoys spending time with family and helping others. Her journey continues in ministry with a strong foundation of love and support from her spouse, brother Joshua Jackson, who's in our media booth, and their three children. Amen. So my sisters and brothers, our choir is going to come, and they're going to minister. And after they finish ministering, the first voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Syria Monroe, and the second will be Evangelist Kelly Jackson. Amen. Would you extend your hands towards these preachers? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for using your daughters too. We thank you, Lord God, and we ask that you will use them mightily this day. Oh God, may we hear from heaven on this Pentecost Sunday. Lord, may we even feel the rush of a mighty a rushing wind, Lord God. May we hear it and may we feel it in this place. Lord God, we pray that tongues of fire will sit upon your daughters right now. So that when all has been said and done, you will look upon them and we will hear your voice say, These are my beloved daughters in whom I am well pleased. Use them, God. Use them mightily for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Father.
shepherd of this house and my pastor and friend to our first lady and to all the ministers on the roster. I am glad to be in the house of the Lord today and to be standing behind this sacred desk. I find it an honor and a privilege to be here and I don't take it lightly. But thank God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all that you have all that has been said and done for the singing, for the praying, for the scriptures read early in devotion. Now, Lord God, I ask that you would just move me out the way and let Jesus rise up. You told me one day, Lord, if I open up my mouth, you would speak through me. Have your divine way today, God. Father God, that somebody at the end will come running, saying, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to get to know this God that you know? Father, have your divine way. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You may stand me for the scripture reading. Um, coming from Psalms, the 8th chapter, um, verses 3 and 4. And I am reading, well, I'll read from this, this screen because I have the New Life translation. And it reads as follows. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visited him? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And if I could take a topic today with the help of the Lord, it would be, do you know him? Like he knows you. Amen. Do you know him like he knows you? Amen. This song was an expression of David's amazement of the honor that God had bestowed upon mankind. Amen. As we humans were created by God for a glorious purpose, we are so valuable to God. We are so special objects of his concern and favor. We honor him and he honored us by choosing us to rule over his creation. Yet the consciousness of our favorite position is no reason for praising ourselves, but a reason for giving God the praise. Is that right? Giving God the glory. God loves us so much. He says in 2 Peter, uh, verse uh, chapter 5 and 7 he said cast your cares upon me because I care for you amen so that means he's able to carry our load when the load gets too heavy you can give the load to him amen how do we get to know this great big God that David was talking about David just was uh, in awe of this big God who saw this little man amen the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. Well, we know sometimes David did some things that were not pleasing to God. Does that sound like any of you today? I know it sounds like me. Amen. But God looked on the heart of David. And he liked what David brought to him. The fact that David had a heart to repent. You know, people can do things and know they're doing wrong and have no mind to repent. I thank God I have a mind to repent. I don't need nobody to tell me when I've done something wrong. The Holy Spirit convicts you, and you should be on your knees, in your heart, on your physical knees, saying, God, I'm sorry. Amen? I'm sorry that I grieved the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry that I, did, I said this to Sister So-and-So, or I didn't do this over there. Amen? David was a man after God's own heart. And wherever David went, God was there. You know, we can't hide from God. He said, if you make your bed in hell, I'll meet you there. He said, if you go to the hills, I'll meet you there. So wherever we go, he is there because he is omnipresent everywhere at the same time. He's omniscious because he's all-knowing, amen, and he's all powerful right 
So we can't hide from the God that David was talking about, that he was so amazed about somebody caring enough about him to see him and, and forgive his wrong. Amen? And Jesus came as an example for us. Amen? He, God sent him as the perfect example for us to follow. How do you get to know this God, this Jesus, this Holy Ghost that keeps us? Amen. You get to know it through the word of God. You get to know him by studying his word. You know, in a relationship, you don't get to know that person until you study them. You spend some time with them. You commune with them. Amen. If we don't never take time to study the word, how will you know the God that David was talking about? How do you know the God that David was amazed about? Amen. And though David did many bad things, God still loved David. Just like he loved you and I. Amen. Do you know him like he know you? We may never in our lifetime get to know the full creator. Amen. And the attributes of God. The way he loves us so beyond our faults. Amen. And he sees every one of our needs. You know, I was thinking about it when the Lord gave me his heart. I said, now, Lord, that doesn't sound like a shouting message. And he said, well, I didn't intend for it to be shouting message. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I didn't intend to come and tickle your feathers today. Amen. I come to make a provocation to you, to give you a, a word from the Lord. Say, do you know him like he knows you? Amen. And to tell you how to get acquainted with him. Amen. Studying his word. And like I said, in a relationship, you don't know that person. And my mother used to say, you don't know him until you live with him. And I said, well, even when you live with a mom, you find out some things you don't know. Amen. And you want to turn around and run. Amen. Say amen, men. Say amen, women. Hallelujah. Because you're learning about that person. Sometimes we don't even court them long enough. You know, we just say, I'm in love. I'm in love. Oh, no. So I want to I wanna marry him. I want to marry her. I want to make her my wife. I want to make her. And don't know nothing about it. Amen. And after months, things come about him. <laughs> oh, my <ready to> God. She's <laughs> stirred. She's stirred. Oh, my brother said he met a girl. And he brought her home. And then he know that, you know. Going on, we are just in here. Amen. He said she stopped pulling stuff off, pulling this off. He said, "All right, now God, one more thing. Come on, I'm gonna run." Hallelujah. Glory to God. He didn't get to know her. He didn't get to know her. He didn't get to know her inside. He didn't get to know her heart. He didn't get to know all about her. Amen. And the same thing with the women. You didn't get to know him. You didn't study him. You didn't have dinner with him. You didn't fix dinner with him. You didn't know that he liked uh, red or he liked white or she liked purple because you didn't study them. God said, come to know me in the pardon of your sin. Get to know my word because my word is true. Everything else is going to pass away, but the word of God is going to stand forever. Do you know him? Like he knows you. Hallelujah today. God is looking for people and he's coming back for prepared people. Are you prepared for him? Are you getting prepared for him? Because one is going to be left in the field and one is going to be taken home. Somebody's going to be working and another one working. One going to be left and the other going to be taken home. I want to be the one taken home. I don't want to be here for the rapture. Glory to God. Do you know him? David, everywhere God, David went, God was there. David ran one time, ran in a cave. God was there. Plenty of them running from themselves. Some of us are running from ourselves. Know that God has called you to do a certain thing and you're running. Let me tell you, you're going to do it before you leave here. If you don't do it, but one day you're going to do it before you leave here. Amen. Because when God puts his hands on you, can't nobody take his hands off of you. Hallelujah. And I always, you know, tell people when you ask me, well, 
um, how you get there? How did you how get you there? there? I said, I came from the school of hard knocks. <laughs> Amen. No, I didn't go to divinity. I went to neology. Amen. And I learned a lot of things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that the book couldn't teach me. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost taught me. The Holy Ghost gave me the word. The Holy Ghost filled me. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I do have the evidence. And I show it every now and then. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is real. And he's real every day. Not just Sundays. Every day God is real. That's why David loved God so. He loves him because God loves him first. Hallelujah. And old David did all kind of things. He still went to God and said, God, I'm sorry. One time he tore off his clothes and put ashes on his head and lost his son. But he said, God, I still love you. Hallelujah. You will love him enough today that if he took something from you that you really love, you will still love him. I know I'll still love him anyhow. And sometimes God will put you to the test. Amen. And really see if your faith is real. Glory to God. Do you really trust him like you say you trust him? Are you talking about this thing and not living it? This is a lifelong thing. Hallelujah. This journey called life, we got to walk it. We got to talk it. We got to do everything. Hallelujah. So I admonish you today to get to know him. Know the God that David was talking about. Because he knows all about you. That's the word for today. Oh, that's a word, isn't it? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. That was a word. Do you know him? Do you love him? Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I must say, Pastor C, we are in the vein. Amen. Because I must admit, when I began to study for the word, I didn't hear any shout music, if that makes sense. I didn't hear the organ. I didn't see anybody running around the building like I desired. I was like, yeah, God, I, I want to be the next Joel Osteen. I want to preach a prosperity message, God. And he said, no, player. No, 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 no. This is not that kind of word. Amen. How many of you know we have to do what God wants us to do, not what we want to do? Amen. So I give honor today. The house has been addressed, but I would like to give honor to our very senior pastor, Pastor Hemphill, for thinking of us. God is a thunder. Amen. Thank you. Giving honor to uh, Lady Hemphill. Giving honor to the ministers and all the dignitaries in the house. Uh, giving honor to my, to you. And uh, last but not least, oh, I cannot forget, giving honor to my mother. She is sitting here, right over here to support me today. Amen. Don't just wave at her and say, hey, Miss Gentry. <laughs> Amen. And last but certainly not least, I give honor to my husband. Amen. Who is in the booth working in the house. Amen. Before we go into the word, I just want to minister in song just a little bit. Is that all right? And if y'all know the song, I ask that you guys just sing it with me. Amen. Thank you, God. Come on, Kelly. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. How many love them? How many love them? How many love them today? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, uh, I would like to, um, let's stand for the word. It is custom. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand for the word of God today. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, God. We'll be coming out of the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses one through four. That will be the first scripture. Amen. All right, if you have it, say amen. 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 All right, let's go ahead and read together. The, it is on the screens. You may look to your monitors. Amen. amen. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole seated in the presence of God, I would like to speak to you a little bit, just briefly, amen, with the topic of they say it's just a building. Look at somebody and say, they say it's just a building. But I'm here to tell you that there is power in the building. Amen. Let me share with you that when I was uh, coming up in church, I uh, wasn't fresh. I was just coming into leadership. Um, and I was coming to church without any real expectation. I was just coming to church. I was just coming to visit. I was just coming to fellowship. I was not coming with an expectation, was not coming um, to do anything. As, as a matter of fact, if somebody asked me to do something, I may have said no. Um, but I was just coming, right? And as I was coming, I also had the nerve to leave my expectancy or my good time in church in someone else's hands. Come on, how many of us, can we, can we be honest and just say, when we come into church, sometimes we don't have the mind to just to, to do anything. We're just here, right? And we're expecting for someone to preach us happy. We're expecting for the choir to sing us happy, right? Amen, that was me. Instead of realizing that, it was my responsibility to grab hold what was already working in the building. And I had to realize that, Kelly, you had to take responsibility. You have to be mindful of when you're coming into God's house. It's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's not about what you necessarily need. You have to come in with expectancy. You have to come in and realize that there is already something dwelling here in this house. And that is power. And I want to share with you the definition of power. It says, it's the ability to produce an effect. Not Affect with an A, it's effect. Because affect is your emotions, it's your feelings. But effect is actions. And the Holy Ghost, for those that don't know, the Holy Ghost is the action of God. The Holy Ghost is the action of God. So let's go back to the scripture. What happened on the day of Pentecost? The action of God came in and produced an effect. What was the effect? The power of God. 
Before we showed up today, the building already had power. It already had electricity, the lights were working, the monitors were working, the mics were working, praise God. The AC was working, amen, praise God. Everything was available to be used and ready to go. It was just waiting for somebody to show, turn it on so it can serve it. How many people are waiting for you to turn on so you can be used to fulfill the purpose for concerning them? How many people are waiting for you to turn on so you can be used, like I said, for the benefit of God? I'll ask you one more time. How many people are waiting for you to activate the power that's already within you so they can be blessed? Who are those people I'm talking about? The people attached to you, your family, your friends, your co-workers, people at church, amen? Before I found out that God has called me to be an evangelist, up and showing up to church. But I didn't stop there. Let me tell you the second part of the story. The more I came to church, the more I desired to live out the word that I was being taught. But it didn't stop there. After applying the word, I really tried to live this thing out the way that I knew how. And God showed me who he's called me to be. And once I learned that he called me to be an evangelist, I knew that I could no longer just come to church. But now I'm obligated to show up with some power. And that's the ability to produce. What are you producing in the building? Some of us have been in church all of our lives, and we still don't know our purpose and won't try to find out. Why? Because we won't move past our no, our N-O, not what we know, our no. What are we producing in the building? So that means when I showed up today, I came with the ability to produce. Is that what you're saying? I came with the ability to set the atmosphere. I came with the ability. I came with the ability to change some things, some, to, to shake some things up, to break up the ground that God has placed me on. You're telling me that I came with some power and demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. It's more than just a building. There's power in the building. Hallelujah. Somebody say there's power in the building. Hallelujah. I ask you this. When we come into the building, what is it that you are looking for? What is it that you are desiring? What is it that you are producing? Are we producing jealousy? Are we producing pride? Are we producing envy? Lack of support for one another? Are we producing discord among one another? What about gossip? What about confusion? What about hypocrisy? Why do I say these things? Because we need to understand that we have the, the power to produce some things, but we will either produce something negative or positive. What side of the spectrum will we be found on? So when you know Jesus, that's good, that's good. God, I want to share with you this. When you show up with the power of God, you produce unity. You produce true love. You produce peace. You produce kindness. You produce love for one another. Not the, understand, not the love from under, the understanding of us, but the love from God. 
Son of the Spirit. You produce hope. And ask me how I know. Because I got saved in the building. I got filled with the Holy Ghost in the building. I got a faith increase in the building. I learned how to walk out my salvation in the building. I got strength from my brothers and sisters in the building. I got vision and instruction in the building. I got delivered in the building. I got my last name in the building. I got ordained in the building. Look at somebody and say there's power in the building. Oh, hallelujah, there's power in the building. Oh, God. Why do you think that God has called us to congregate together? Why do you think he's told us to not forsake to fellowship and assemble ourselves? Because there was power in coming together. There's power in numbers. We cannot forsake or think for one second that it's not power in coming together. The scripture says one could put 1,000 to flight, right? And then two can put 10,000. I don't know about you, but that math don't sound right. It's not mathing to me, as people would say. The math ain't mathing, right? But we know that God's math is, is beyond our imagination. It's beyond our finite mind. It's beyond what we can think. And so we cannot think for one second that coming together is not an effective thing to do. I want to close with this. A lot of you like basketball, right? Sports, right? If you have a basketball game, and only one person shows up from the basketball, from the team that's supposed to be playing the opposing team that has about 12 players, let's just say, right? How effective do you think they will be? How many baskets do you think they'll make against the opposing team? Surely, Pastor Hemphill could preach, right? And nobody is here. Sure, he can encourage himself. I'm sure he'll get an encouraging word. But how effective would the word be if we're not here to receive it? I want to share with you today that when we come together, there is nothing that cannot happen. There's nothing that God cannot do. It says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Inhabitation means that he will be right there inhabiting right there in the midst of it all and there's nothing that cannot take place, which is the power and demonstration of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say there's power in the building. There's power in the building. Hallelujah. So I want to leave you with this. Surely, surely, we are in the building. Right? We are in the building. But here's the thing. And there's power here dwelling. But one thing about it is, the power will not be effective unless you show up and activate it. You have to be willing to show up and activate the power that's already dwelling here and that's already dwelling within you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We're standing all around the church, standing all around the church. This time, sisters and brothers, we want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. One of the things that we were reminded of as uh, evangelist Kelly Jackson was preaching, she was uh, today being the day of Pentecost, and, and I shared that with us in our time of consecration. 
in that first chapter, in the eighth verse, he says that you, he says, when you received a power from on high, you shall be my witnesses first in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the othermost parts of the earth. My sisters and brothers, there is power in the building. And one of the things that we challenge everyone when they come to Bible study on Thursday nights is to always remember, as you look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, when you've received power, when you've received the Holy Ghost, when he's come upon you, one of the first places he says to do so is at home. He says Jerusalem. Then he said Judea. That, that's around the way, if you will. That's around the corner. That's in your neighborhood. And then he says Samaria. Amen. Samaria is going out a little bit further and then the other most parts. So we want to start today. We want to start today in the house. We want to make sure that we extend this invitation to Christian discipleship to those of you that are under the sound of my voice that you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins. We want to extend that invitation to you right now to come and make Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life today. If you don't know him, if you, if you don't call him Savior, if you don't call him Lord, we want to invite you to come. A second call, if you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today, you want to turn this thing around. Amen. You started out with the Lord. You were doing good, but then you got tripped up along the way. It's time for you to come back, to come back to the Lord. Amen. Come back to him right now in Jesus' name. And thirdly, if you don't have a home church, we talked about it earlier, especially those of you that were first-time guests here at True Love, that you came as family, but you came as friends, rather, but you can leave as family. We want to extend that invitation to you at this time. Is there one today? Amen. You want to be saved. That's what we're talking about, making Jesus Savior and Lord of your life. If you want to be saved, we want you to come. I want to introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Those of you that know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know that every day with Jesus has been sweeter than the day before. You want to see the Lord make a change in your life. Is there one today? In the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Amen. This is your time. This is your moment. Secondly, if you want to rededicate your life, amen. If you want to rededicate your life, you can come. Amen. If you want to join the church today, if you want to become a part of that, hallelujah. <laughs> come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. You come and you want to be a part of this church. Amen. We want to be your church family, and I want to be your pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another today? Is there another person today that's coming? Another person coming today to become a part of True Love Mission Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister brothers, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This time they're going to fill out some paperwork, choir. You got a little something you can sing over time. Amen. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Amen. Sister Cannon, I was reaching out to hug her. She said, I asked your wife for permission to hug her husband. <laughs> Come on now. Up high. <laughs> praise God. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Amen. Rededication. Rededication. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Amen. Praise God. One step at a time. Hallelujah. I know it's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not only have we been waiting for you, the Lord's been waiting for you. For this time of rededication. Praise God. 
Would you please extend your right hand of faith? Uh, okay, praise God. Extend your right hand of faith towards Sister Cannon at this time. Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for Sister Aileen's decision, Lord God, today to rededicate her life to you. Lord God, somewhere along the way, Lord God, she felt as though she strayed away from you, Lord God. Didn't feel your power, didn't feel your presence like she used to feel you before. So Lord God, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, David said, purge me with hyssop that I might be clean. Wash me that I might be whiter than snow. He said, Lord God, to restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And I'll teach transgressors your ways. So, Lord God, we're praying for a refreshment in Sister Cannon's life. We're praying, Lord God, for revival to take place in her life. Lord God, that the fire, Lord God, will be rekindled in the name of Jesus. Lord God, may she fill you afresh and anew in her life, oh God. And Father God, we pray that, Lord God, as she catches on fire, that she'll stay on fire, Lord God. And not let anyone's comments or anyone's hypocrisy or anyone's declarations or their, their gossip or rumors or whatever they got to say. Their discouragement, Lord God. We're praying in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, never again will the fire be blown out. Never again will it be extinguished, Lord God. And Father God, as Jeremiah said, that it will be fire like fire shut up in our bones. Oh, God, may the fire, Lord God, be rekindled now. On this day of Pentecost, Lord God, we're praying not only for Sister Cannon, but for every child of God under the sound of my voice. Lord God, may we catch on fire afresh and anew. Lord God, set us on fire in Jesus' name. Lord God, don't let the fire burn out. But Lord God, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Oh, God, burning, burning with the Holy Ghost. Do it, Lord God. Do it now. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, fill her, Lord God, from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet, Lord. May she feel it, Lord God. May she know your presence is with us. And Lord God, each person, Lord God, that is here that's prayed along with us, Lord God, may their souls catch on fire as well. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the preachers that preach today. Lord God, revive the fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you've done this day is marvelous in our sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First step, Aileen. That was the first step. Amen. Amen. First step is rededication. Amen. Yeah, we're looking for that Arnold Schwarzenegger, that Terminator anointing. I'll be back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pentecost in the building. Pentecost in the building. Hallelujah. We thank God again for our preachers, our tag team today. Amen. And for their ministry today. Amen. Do you know him like he knows you? And they say it's just a building. It's not just a building. Amen. Praise God. I want to make a couple of quick announcements for you today. I'll uh, share those with you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, True Love, for your loving support that you show have shown and have continued to show the Winslow family. 
Amen. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 1020, we'll be at Veterans Memorial uh, Drive. Uh, we'll be at Veterans Memorial Cemetery at 1900 Veterans Memorial Drive in Boulder City, where we will have the internment for Mother Winslow. Amen. Amen. So please, if you can make it out there, uh, if not, please remember everyone in prayer for traveling mercy, as well as for the strength of the family. Praise God. Folk are, I, I, folk are out here driving all kinds of which way. Amen. It's quite wild today. Amen. And of course, with EDC taking place, amen, we know a lot more things are happening. Thank God for uh, the men, for the youth and the brotherhood, for the luncheon for Mother's Day last weekend. Praise God. We thank God for the youth and the men who helped me to distribute the, the carnations and all the youth that distributed uh, different gifts uh, to the mothers on last week. We thank God for your support as well for our youth ministry. And for the youth ministry, uh, they're going to have their lemonade fundraiser, their lemonade table today. Uh, they're, all proceeds are going towards their trip to Magic Mountain. And praise God for that. We praise the Lord for that trip that will be taking place. I need to give you a couple of other notes. Uh, please, if you can jot it down somewhere. The Southwest region of the PMBC, they will be uh, will meet the June 23rd through the 27th, and that will take place at the Santa Fe Hotel. Uh, we're asking uh, the vice president at large, Reverend Johnny Gilmore, is asking that everyone would start to begin uh, will begin rather and start to book rooms at the Santa Fe Hotel for those of you that will be going and being a part of our convention this year. Southwest uh, region of PNBC, June 23rd through the 27th. I want to let you know also on this coming Thursday, which is May the 23rd, there will be a men's choir rehearsal. They're trying to put together a massive, uh, a mass men's choir uh, from all of the PNBC churches here in the state of Nevada. And that re rehearsal will take place on Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. That announcement comes to us from the president of the Nevada State of PNBC, our very own pastor, Emeritus Willie Jacobs Jr. So please, we want your support. Amen. So you can carry a tune even if you can. Amen. We'll find something for you to do. Amen. You can still make a joyful noise with the men. But we want to make sure that you are there because this choir is forming for the layman service, which will be on Sunday the 23rd, also at the PNBC convention. We'll let you know more about that. Praise God. The 50th church anniversary uh, committee will meet immediately following service. And we also have the Brotherhood who's asking the men of the Brotherhood, please meet with Reverend Grant. Uh, following service as well. My sisters and brothers, I shared during Sunday school uh, that my good friend, and I shared as well, uh, this is my good friend, Reverend Dr. Aaron B. Neal. Uh, we went to, we started ministry together in the early 90s on the eastern shore of Maryland. Uh, we became good friends as well as classmates at Howard University School of Divinity. And uh, he and his wife, uh, Sister Ineda, uh, Sister Ineda Neal is also here. And I want you to just come up and just greet the people. I know you weren't ready for that. Amen. You've been in ministry too long to be looking at me like this. Truly, we thank God for this day. But I must say, I've been in a many churches. But when I walked in the sanctuary, you saw the same. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Y'all didn't hear me. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. This is the day that the Lord has made. I still rejoice and be glad in it. Because the God I serve said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But truly, truly, He is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. If I say anything to you, pray for me that I will continue to do God's will. I'm going to ask your blessings today. I'm getting ready to start a new endeavor. I got married to my wife.
two and a half years ago. I pastored my dad's church for about eight years. I was in Denver. He called me home. He said, go home and help your dad. I left Denver and went home, and I passed on my desk for about 89 years. We got to the point where we had to merge. So now my church is with uh, Bishop Womack, Jane Womack, always house of prayer. This year we will be going to Panama to be looking to start ministry. We have a house in Panama. I thank God for the opportunity. But I'm reminded of what my dad told me the day I went to him and said, God told me to preach. He said, first son, God can't use you unless you humble yourself. Did y'all hear what I said? I know that we like titles, we like names, we want to be looked upon as being something great, but God can't use you unless you humble yourself. He said, second of all, don't do it. And you ain't going to do it for the rest of your life. A charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. I'll leave you with this. Joshua said, Jew ye this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, you will serve the Lord. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Reverend Dr. Aaron B. Neal. Praise God. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we are not going to belabor the moment. Uh, yes. Help a brother out. I ain't take my king though. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Immediately after church, ladies, can you meet me right here? Right here, immediately after church. Ladies, right after church. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kate. And we thank God for our musicians today who stood in for Reverend Matt Banks. God bless you. Amen. Well, y'all stand up and I'll shut up. Come on, let's time to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. beyond our faults and supplies all of our needs. Truly, this has been a day of rejoicing, for thou hast seen pleasure in thy sight. Blessed, O Savior, we thank you for this day. We ask your blessings as we leave this place, but not depart from your presence. Let your glories now reign in our heart. Let our lives be filled with the joy of servanthood. May the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.